Um, this is going to be my video all about my cheek piercings. Um, I've had them for almost two months now. I'm just going to give you a little information on them. When you first get them, they do swell up immensely. Um, I think my cheeks got about like out here. This, one here. this is the bars that I originally got when I got pierced. So they're, they're pretty long. But they have to be this long. Don't let anybody pierce your cheeks and give you a regular size labret bar. When you go to ask about this piercing, make sure you go to somebody who has done it multiple times. Not somebody who's never done it before. Make sure when they're doing the procedure that they look at your cheeks. They see how far you can open your mouth. Make sure that they shine a light on the inside and outside of your cheek. To see where your veins and your glands are. Don't just let them stick a needle in your face without looking first. That's a clear sign that they don't know what they're doing. I I got the balls and not the flat backs when I first got pierced because I didn't want them. And my piercer decided with me that they didn't. I didn't want them to cut into the back of my cheek and then have to be cut out because the swelling does get really bad. For the swelling, I chose not to do ice. My piercer suggested that that would be it wouldn't really help and I agreed with him because I've had several piercings before and it didn't help so for swelling I suggest go ahead and just take ibuprofen on a regular basis these do have a tendency to bruise mine bruised pretty bad like right in this area but it went away within two weeks I wanna say the swelling went down within two to three weeks it really wasn't that bad it was annoying to have the little balls in your mouth. It just means that you have to be super, super careful, you know, when you go to eat. Taking care of these, the aftercare on these, is going to be somewhat standard. Um, however, I did not do any sort of sea salt soaking, as I've had bad experiences with that in the past, and my piercer also suggested not to do it because it dries them out really bad. What, my, what I would suggest you do is what my piercer suggested to me. Take your regular mouthwash, just the Equate regular everyday mouthwash. It doesn't care. It doesn't matter what color. And then get yourself a gallon of distilled water from the grocery store. It's like a few cents. Take an old empty water bottle, fill it about here with mouthwash, and then fill it the rest of the way with distilled water. Shake it up, mix it up. If you are a snacker, like you eat often, go ahead and do a little bit less mouthwash and a little bit more water so that you don't, you know, dry out your the inside of your mouth and cause irritation to the inside of your piercing and to your gums. And then what you're going to do to clean the outside is you take a clean Q-tip, moisten the end with the mouthwash that you just used on the inside of your mouth, Go around the piercing, make sure that you clean off all the gunk because you're going to get a lot of crust and gunk and there's going to be some discharge. Make sure that you clean all that off. Use a different side for each piercing. Don't use the same side on both piercings. Make sure that once you're done, you take a clean, dry Q-tip and go over it one more time just to dry the area. Make sure that it's not left goopy and this with stuff running down your face. Make sure that you rinse your mouth after every time you eat. Anytime you smoke, I recommend you don't smoke. I don't smoke, but I recommend that you don't smoke when you're healing these piercings. Don't eat anything spicy. Don't eat anything extremely hot. If you're going to eat anything extremely hot, be very, very careful because you can burn and irritate the piercing. These piercings take six months to a year to fully heal. There is scarring left behind, so make sure that you keep that in mind before you get them. There's going to be scarring. Also, the dimpling. After a few months, there will be dimpling regardless. Because basically when they pierce it, they pierce through the muscle. So that is going to cause like a dent. Um, you're also going to, you should decide to take them out depending on how long you keep them. That's going to cause more and more scar tissue. Also, the length of bar that you use it manages how much the compression into your skin is so it will also have a factor on what your dimpling looks like when you 
if you should decide to remove them. When I went to change my piercings out from the longer size to the shorter size, I chose a 5 8 So 5 8 is what I have in there now. 5 8 is like a tongue ring size, which is like, I know this isn't a flat back, but it'll give you an idea of the size, is like this size. This is what you normally use for a tongue ring. Here's your, your size difference there. So it's, it's not too significant. It is a bit of a size difference. So the flat backs I have in now are basically this size, but with flat on it, flat on the inside. This is what I was pierced with. So it does, it does take up quite a bit of the length. I like the way they are now, but I do want a tiny itty bitty bit more dimpling. So what I'm going to do is after about a month of letting them get used to this size, letting them heal a little bit more, I'm going to attempt to get a 9 uh flat back and try that, see how the dimpling is, and if it sinks in just a little bit, then I'll be good there. Because I don't want it to be like, because some people they wear them all sunk in, like, all creepy like, and I don't like that. I just want it to sink in just a little bit, so that it looks like a dimple and not like all weird. That's what I'm going to do. But if anybody has any questions or anything about this piercing, I'll be more than happy to try and assist you. If you're in the Florida area and you're looking to get these piercings, I can also direct you to the gentleman who did mine, which would be your safest bet, because he really knows what he's doing. I spoke with him at length before getting the piercings, which is a good idea. If you're going to go to a piercer, make sure that, especially if you're getting something as advanced as cheek piercings, go ahead and make sure that you talk to the piercer for a length of time. The first piercer that I went to, to speak with them about cheek piercings, just speaking to them at length, I could tell that they really didn't know what they were doing and that they were just going to shove a needle in my face. And I was probably going to end up with problems. So make sure that you speak to these people at length. I mean, every piercer did not get the same education. Um, some piercers, you know, they're good at what they do. They're good people. But they may just on not be aware of certain things about the procedure. And it is your face, so make sure you take that responsibility. Because cheek piercings, as well as any piercing, is a large responsibility. You're going to have to take care of these and baby them for a long time. They're not like a normal lip piercing that heals in like four to six weeks. But you definitely have to take care of them. You have to watch them. You have to clean them. I recommend not sleeping on them. What I do is I take a pillow, since I have a side sleeper, I take a pillow and I bunch it up just under just over the top under my ear and then I have another pillow that I rest on my chin just so that this area is not pressed against anything while I'm asleep I also do that because my punches are still they're still healing so they don't like to be pressed into the pillow either <laughs> like I said if you have any questions go ahead and put them in the comment box below just let me know YouTube doesn't always contact me when I get a comment but I'll try to keep an eye on this video to see if any questions come up or if any suggestions for videos comes up. Um, I've been trying to get to these, but with moving and trying to further my education and everything, I've been kind of busy. Uh, I meant to make this cheap racing video a long, long time ago when they were still fresh. I do have one picture. Excuse my goofy look in the picture. I was trying to take it um, outside and I have like antennas in my face. Oh my god, well, my hair stayed down. You can see what they look like when they were longer. Um, but like I said, as long as you're responsible, or you speak at length with your piercer, understand what they're saying, make sure you never, ever, ever touch your piercing. Oh, it drives me insane whenever I see people making videos about their piercings. They're all like, this piercing and that one, and touching it and rubbing on it. And I'm like, no, no, don't. Never ever touch your piercing unless you've just washed your hands. Your hands are disgusting. You touch doorknobs, you touch your animals, you touch your your own clothes. Your clothes have been sitting on, you know, things that other people have sat on and people could have like picked their nose and sat on that chair like 20 minutes ago and rubbed that shit everywhere. You got to be careful what you're doing. Make sure you wash your hands. Don't put anything on your piercing that you would not stick in your eyeball or in your mouth. It's the same concept. 
you have to be very very careful because it is an open wound in your face it is an open wound in the body part you're getting it in you don't want to stick bacteria no lotions no foundations no makeup of any kind needs to go into your piercing my piercing has dried out don't put lotion in your piercing ever if it's a little dry then back off of your cleaning routine for a little while let your skin naturally balance itself don't stick any neosporin don't stick oils don't stick a and d lotion in there don't stick anything in it if it starts to become irritated and you think it's starting to get infected try using a little bit of diluted um, hand soap antibacterial gold on it for a couple of days in the shower make sure that you go back to your piercer or if you have any concerns at all any discharge concerns any I think my piercing is getting infected concerns any problems whatsoever make sure you go back to your piercer and check with them they did it they know what they're doing they'll be more than happy to assist you they don't want your face to get all messed up any more than you do I think I'm done ranting now I'm gonna let this video go so if you have any questions comments concerns please put them in the info box below if you have any ideas for future videos you'd like to learn from me, go ahead and place that. And I will see you later. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Bye.